All right, in this particular lesson, what we are going to be looking at is solving quadratic equations by graphing. Uh, in the introduction of this unit, we looked and saw that there's four methods to doing this, and we're going to look at the first one, which is graphing. Uh, before solving a quadratic equation, it has to be represented in standard form. At least this makes it uh, the easiest to start. So standard form is always making one side equal zero and is in the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. When determining where the function is equal to zero, you are finding graphically uh, the x-intercepts. These are also called zeros or roots. So in the case of this first question, uh, where it says, what are the roots of negative x squared plus 8x plus minus 16 is equal to 0? What that means is, essentially, where are the x-intercepts, or where does this function cross the x-axis? In order to do that, I would suggest completing the square. That way we know the vertex form of this particular function. Uh, so if I complete the square on the function, y is equal to negative x squared plus 8x minus 16, which I'll do quickly, uh, this would get us to a completed square of y is equal to 1 times x squared minus 8x plus 16, and the constant outside the brackets, or q, will be 0. So our completed square is y is equal to negative x minus 4 squared. If you really wanted to put a plus zero in here to indicate that it's not moving up or down at all, you're more than welcome to. So in this case, our quadratic function has a vertex at 4, 0, and it opens down. And since a is equal to 1, it's the typical y equals x squared shape or curve. Uh, there's our graph. In answer to our question, uh, where does this function equal 0, or what value of x here makes this equal 0, the value of x that gives us an output or a y value of 0 is 4. So our solution to this problem is x equals 4. Okay. Uh, let's move on to a second example. In this particular example, what we're doing is looking at a word problem. It says the function rx is equal to negative 3 plus 4x minus a half x squared. That gives the store's revenue r from water bottle sales, where x is the price of a water bottle. What price will result in no revenue? So in this case, uh, the key word here being no revenue suggests that the revenue is equal to zero. If I substitute this into the formula for revenue, we are left with zero is equal to negative three plus four x minus a half x squared. So in order to find out where this revenue is equal to zero, in this case we have a revenue axis and an x axis, or a price axis and a revenue axis, uh, we're trying to find out where revenue is equal to zero. So if we graph this function, and find out where it crosses the x-axis that will tell us where the revenue equals zero. So in order to do that, I'm going to put this into standard form and then complete the square. So it's zero is equal to negative a half x squared plus four x minus three. So as we complete the square, uh, <clears throat> if we do this carefully, we'll find out where the vertex is and then determine how to solve this. So it's zero is equal to negative a half x squared minus 8x. In order to complete the square, we have to add and subtract 16, uh, remove the negative 16, and we'll find that our completed square, which is coming here quickly, will be negative a half times x minus 4 squared plus 5. So in this case, our vertex for this particular function is at the uh, coordinate 4, 5. So that's right here. And the multiplier of negative a half, or the a value of negative a half, means that all the perfect squares that are typically 1, 4, 9, 16 are going to be cut in half. So they're going to come a half, 2, 4.5, and 8. So these distances here uh, from our new origin would be a half, 2, four and a half, and eight. So in other words, our points or our graph would look something
like this. Uh, this gets me to what one of the disadvantages of solving by graphing is. One of the disadvantages is that we can't get exact values unless it's a whole number crossing the x-axis. In this particular case, it says answer to the nearest tenth of a dollar. So what price or what value of x will make the revenue equal zero? Uh, I would estimate that these two points here might be roughly eighty cents and maybe seven dollars and twenty cents but that is just an estimate a disadvantage of this particular <clears throat> problem moving on to our last problem uh, it says solve 2x squared plus 12x is equal to negative 23 by graphing although there's other ways of doing this I would again suggest putting this into standard form so adding 23 and making one side equal zero. So essentially we're solving 2x squared plus 12x plus 23, sorry, uh, is equal to zero. So again, we're trying to find out what values of x make the output or make this function equal to zero. So where are the x-intercepts? Uh, if I complete the square with this, I'll be left with a completed square of two times x plus three squared plus five is equal to zero. So in this particular case, the vertex would be found at the point negative three, five. And since your multiplier is, or your a value is two, all the perfect squares will be doubled from our new origin. That, that will be our uh, vertical expansion. Uh, so this distance here will be 2, this distance here will be 8, 18 is off of the grid here so we'll just do these five points. Uh, we will find out that this doesn't even matter because as you can see uh, where does this ever equal 0? The answer is nowhere. There are no values of x that will make this function equal 0. There's no solution. So for this particular quadratic equation, there are no solutions. Uh, finally, just some key ideas for this lesson is that the graph of a quadratic function, as we've learned in the first example, it can have one x-intercept, or from the second example, two x-intercepts, or from the third example, zero x-intercepts. Therefore, a quadratic equation can have zero, one, or two solutions, which are also called roots or zeros.